The bright and cheery exterior of Lisa Frank is probably the only part of Lisa Frank that is bright and cheery because the interior, the working conditions in the factory were awful. But before we get to that, let's look at how they got there. So Lisa Frank, in addition to being a company, is a real person. And the height of Lisa Frank was in the 90s and they sold all sorts of products. Lisa Frank makes the coolest stickers. I should know because I have most of them. There's all these folders and pens and backpacks and stationery and stickers, of course stickers. Quick breakdown. So Lisa moves to Arizona from Michigan for college. She sees this art from local natives Pottery jewelry starts upselling it in Michigan. She buys it and sells it in Michigan. Then she starts doing her own art, hiring people to make it. Then she starts making it herself. In 1979, she calls the company Lisa Frank Inc. Thus, the company is born. Lisa Frank is notoriously a private person. In fact, in 2012, she did an interview with Urban Outfitters and even then she wouldn't show her face. I'm Lisa Frank, and for everyone who wants to know if I do exist, I do exist. I'm a real person. And you won't find any recent pictures of her. The only pictures you'll find are pretty old. In that interview, though, she did rub people the wrong way with her air of self-importance. A quote. In my own little way, I understood Michael Jackson. We think about it a lot, how well known the name is, but I'm very, very low key, she said. If I use my credit card and they go, oh my gosh, there's Lisa Frank who makes the stickers. I go, isn't that the craziest thing that I have the same name? She pretty much just said she's a recluse cause she's too mega famous and people, I guess, didn't like that. And apparently she lives and breathes the Lisa Frank aesthetic. I couldn't verify it, but apparently this is her house. Her former designer said it was tiresome working for Oh, it's so hot. Okay. Thank you so much for the correction. I think it's more important to have correct information out there than for me to be worrying about being right. So thank you. That's why when I shared it, I was like, I can't verify this because I didn't want to be misleading or anything, but I looked into it a little bit deeper and I found this is her house and look up Oh, I can't point. Up in the corner there, do you see that pink area? I bet on the ground it's like way cooler to see. And the checkered driveway is pretty cool too. And I found this from a site called Virtual Globe Trotting. It's hard to see from the top, but I found this quote from her old designer saying that the house is purple. She also said that working for Lisa Frank was very tiresome and the most challenging part was the incredible pace at which she had to work. Getting ready for big meetings would require lots of overtime and patience for enduring revision after revision after revision. Lisa is a fanatic about detail. The Lisa Frank headquarters are in Tucson, Arizona. The building is still there actually, but it's abandoned now. It used to be on a road called Masterson Avenue, but in 1997, Lisa Frank had it changed to Lisa Frank Avenue. Well, American Airlines was also on Masterson Avenue and they did not find out about this change until they were coming to work and saw a different sign there. Apparently they were not happy about this. Think about it, they had to change all their letterheads, envelopes, business cards, and then not to mention it's gonna say Lisa Frank on all of their stuff. So how did it happen? Well, Lisa Frank apparently did send out a notification, but nobody protested it, so they got the sign changed. Well, they sent the notification to American Airlines to their Dallas location. And there was a strike going on at the Dallas location, so Tucson was never notified. So that's how American Airlines Tucson location is on Lisa Frank Avenue. The Lisa Frank factory in Tucson, Arizona is huge, like 320,000 square feet and on 18 and a half acres huge. And it's completely abandoned and super eerie now. By 2013, the 350 employees dwindled to just six employees that were coming to this location to work. It's been on the market for years now and it's just quite a sight to see. The Arizona sun was not kind to the rainbow truck docks. Pink tinted glass at the rainbow entrance. Lisa Frank is still a company nowadays, it's just not the same. They outsource everything for their production now too. I think this one might be the saddest one. It used to be a unicorn, but it lost its horn, so now it's just a horse. And it's like listed for sale. If you go online, you can find it. One of the reasons for the downfall was awful treatment of the workers in the factory, which I'm gonna go over next. The Lisa Frank factory had a reputation for being a terrible place to work who treated their employees awful. 
there was even a lawsuit and they interviewed a ton of the former employees and all of them said the root of the problem was James Green. Who is James Green? Well, he's Lisa Frank's ex-husband, but at the time he was the CEO of the company and her husband. So that's how he meets Lisa is because he's working at the factory. He starts in 1982. He was the first in-house designer and illustrator. Starts a relationship with Lisa in late 83, early 84, somewhere around there. And then he begins moving up the Lisa Frank corporate ladder. By 92, Lisa names him the CEO. By 94, she marries him. The following year, she has her first child at age 41, decides she wants to spend more time at home with her child and leaves this man in charge at the factory. This man, James Green, was a huge contributor in running the Lisa Frank factory into the ground. And there's tons of documentation of his behavior because there was a court case. One former employee called him abusive, arrogant, and extremely hard to work with. He was prone to fits of rage and then just randomly firing people while he was upset. Several former employees witnessed him throwing chairs. He was described again and again as being an angry, yelly man. One employee said he was a relatively short man who reeked of cologne and had a Napoleon complex. He also intentionally didn't learn their names and would give them nicknames. There was a woman he thought was unattractive, so he would only call her that guy. He didn't allow female employees to wear heels because they couldn't be taller than him. His management style was described as intimidation. In the 90s, Lisa Frank Factory was making products that brought joy to little kids everywhere. While working there was a total nightmare and there's tons of documentation of it because it was in a court case. One employee says, I don't know if it's possible to communicate how bad their reputation was in town. Every person who ever worked there seemed to have a case of PTSD from it. Rainbow Gulag is really an apt description. And they had tons of strange rules for the employees too. According to court documents, it was a place of silence because the co-workers weren't allowed to speak to each other. Management secretly and illegally recorded phone conversations. They were constantly getting memos with new strange rules. No visitors allowed, not even family. They had this internal newsletter and it told them how they were supposed to interact with the CEO, James Green. Penalties for violating these rules, name calling, screaming, immediate termination. One indicator of somewhere is not a good place to work is if they have a very high turnover rate and the Lisa Frank factory in the 90s was no exception to this indicator. Court documents show that one former employee, Jacob, said it was a revolving door. He worked there for four years and his department had 40 people in it. He said in that time it completely changed people two to three times. Another former employee said in a time span of a little over a year, over 80 employees walked out without giving any notice because they were being treated so poorly. And the turnover rate wasn't just from people walking out. There were also temper tantrum firings going on. The CEO, James Green, would have anger management problems and just lash out on people. And this created an environment of fear. People felt unsafe and anxious just because anybody could be fired at any moment. Real experiences from people working in the Lisa Frank factory, and this is all court documented. One former employee says it was the worst place they'd ever worked, which is ironic considering it's covered in rainbows and unicorns. They were fired for speaking to their father on the phone, which they later sued Lisa Frank for. This one's really bad. James Green locks the people into the warehouse. So he was Lisa Frank's husband at the time. So he finds out one employee left 10 minutes early. It enraged him. So he instructs the building manager to put a chain and padlock on the front door so they couldn't leave until work was over. One former employee said it was the silliest setup they'd ever seen because on the outside it's colorful, hearts on the building, but on the inside it was like an abusive alcoholic home. Another former employee said they kept it ice cold, keep people miserable and on edge. It's just insane. 
So in September of 2005, Lisa Frank files for divorce from James Green. He had been abusing her. He had been abusing the people in the workplace. He had been cheating on Lisa with the VP of Lisa Frank Inc. Her name was Rhonda Rowlett and they weren't even secretive about the affair. So when Lisa files for divorce, she also decides, I'm going to take back control of my company. I want to run my company again. At this point, James had been running the company for 10 years, so he was not happy about this. Him and Rhonda actually team up together and they tell employees that they need to pick a side. And since James had been running the company for 10 years, Lisa was a little nervous about taking power back. And so she asked many employees, if I divorce James, will you stay with the company? Ah, my deep dive's already at 10 parts and I have more to say. So I'm going to do a deeper dive on YouTube. It'll be out in the next week or two. So in this series, I talked a lot about the abuse and mistreatment of the people in the Lisa Frank factory, all at the hand of James Green. But that was in the 90s, so I wanted to know what James Green was up to today. Well, apparently right after the lawsuit to get him out of the Lisa Frank company, he converted from Judaism to Christianity and started this Christian apparel line called Christian Man. And he's running the company with Rhonda Rowlett, who he cheated on Lisa Frank with, and she was the VP of Lisa Frank, Inc. Ooh, they're charging $195 for these Christian shirts. See, and then when someone says they believe something, who are you to say they don't believe it? But I really hope he's not just trying to take advantage of people. Oh, and he's trademarked like 23 different slogans, and one of them is Blame James. So that's what he's up to. So since I did the series on Lisa, I really wanted to see what she was up to today. And since she's a known recluse, the most recent thing I could find on her was from 2019. So Lisa does this hotel pop-up in LA and it sells out in under an hour, but there is a controversy. Artist Amina Mucciolo, oh, sorry if I'm saying that wrong. She started noticing a lot of similarities between the pop-up and her own apartment, which is popular on social media. And she knows Lisa Frank has seen it because Lisa has commented on a lot of her posts. And it wasn't just like one little thing, it was thing after thing after thing. And then she noticed even the layout of the apartment was similar. So just things like, okay, I put stuffed animals in my kitchen and you put stuffed animals in yours. Not a big deal on its own, but then she has the photo wall and you have the photo wall. I have this round table with two seats and you have a round table with two seats. It was just a lot of things. So when she publicly speaks about it, Lisa Frank just unfollows her. Hi, the last thing I want to do is upset anybody. I just couldn't fit the whole story into a minute. And a lot of the Lisa Frank stuff I couldn't fit in. That's why I'm going to do a more extensive deeper dive where I don't have the time restraints. But I can finish telling this part of the story, no problem. So Amina was the one who had it, she called it Cloudland themed in her apartment that was really popular online. And then Lisa Franks comes up and she's like, whoa, even the layout is really similar. And that's because the same people that owned her building owned the Lisa Frank building and they're just across the street from one another. So then Amina tries to pay her rent, they don't accept it. And so then she's getting evicted because they didn't accept her rent. And she believes it has to do with the Lisa Frank hotel pop-up that happened. Please pause to read and the second page. Then Lisa Frank's Instagram responds calling her opportunistic. I'm Lisa Frank and for everyone who wants to know if I do exist, I do exist. I'm a real person. We're in my office in Tucson, Arizona. What uh, encompasses the world of Lisa Frank? That would first and foremost probably be rainbows, and then hearts, music notes, teddy bears, unicorns, stars, color, fantasy, jewels, glints, everything to you know that makes a kid happy, smile. I'm crazy. I'm like, <laughs> I'm a lunatic. <laughs> I mean, you, we have to stop me and say, okay, it's enough because. One illustration gets hundreds of hours in it. It's really, you know, kind of madness. I spend a lot of time focused on the business. I know where my priorities lay. 
top priority for both Green and Frank to keep little girls coming back for more so they don't make a move without first consulting their finicky audience. Good morning, class. Good morning. Well, thank you. My name is Carol, and I'm here today from Lisa Frank. Lisa Frank product testers can be found a day or two a week in any of Tucson's elementary schools. Whole classes are recruited as focus groups for upcoming projects. I just was testing uh, fabric swatches with the, the uh, middle school and elementary, and the, I had 16 boards at one time, and we had them pick out. We were completely surprised the ones they picked out because we would not even have picked them. I'll never forget the day I got stuck on Lisa Frank. The stickers were so cool. The colors were awesome. I gotta find more. So I go to the store. And wow, there's tons of awesome Lisa Frank stuff. I gotta have it. What more can I say?